Ever wonder why a towering skyscraper in the heart of Nairobi stands abandoned? Who was behind its construction and why was it left to decay? In the labyrinth of Kenyan history, one name stands out as particularly enigmatic, Nicholas Biwot. Known for his mysterious demeanor, Biwot's life was a masterclass in precaution. He would journey in unmarked vehicles, switching between five cars for a single destination, keeping everyone guessing. Even food at events was a no-go zone for him. He preferred to eat from the common people serving, swapping high-table delicacies for simpler fare. But this wasn't all. Biwot had a knack for keeping intriguing company. His rise to power was marked by his association with individuals like Gadzevi and the Mossad operative David Kimchi. An Israeli resident, Vaisman Aharoni, was also a key player in Biwot's network, arriving in Kenya around the time the country cut diplomatic ties with Israel. But what does this enigmatic figure have to do with the abandoned Yaya Center Tower's West Wing? Let's delve deeper into this intriguing tale. The Yaya Center Tower's West Wing, a promising venture, began construction in the mid-90s, but it never saw the light of day. Now let's rewind a little to when the project was in its infancy. Picture this, it's the mid-90s, and the Yaya Center Tower's West Wing is beginning to take shape. Nicholas B. Watt, a man of influence and power, is deeply involved in the project. He's partnered with Israeli resident Vaisman Aharoni, a connection that would later prove to be crucial. As the construction progresses, the atmosphere grows tense. The Israeli partners, including Aharoni, are feeling the heat. They are not comfortable. They're being trailed everywhere by the special branch, a dreaded intelligence unit. The presence of these shadowy figures puts the Israelis on edge. Their unease seeps into the very foundation of the Yaya Center Tower's west wing. The construction site, once buzzing with activity, is now filled with whispers of uncertainty and fear. The once promising venture is slowly beginning to look like a labyrinth of paranoia. But the tension doesn't stop the construction. The work continues, albeit with a growing sense of unease. The Israelis' fear is not unfounded. Their connection to Biwat, a man known for his complex network of relationships and activities, has put them in the spotlight. They are being watched, and they know it. The shadow of the special branch looms large over the Yaya Center Tower's west wing. However, despite the mounting tension, the Israeli partners are not ready to back down. They continue with the project, their determination matching their unease, but the pressure is mounting, their fear is palpable. They are in a foreign land, working on a project that has become a beacon for unwanted attention. The plot thickens as the Israeli partners decide to abandon the project, but not without one final act of defiance. The Israeli partners, feeling cornered, decide to cut their losses. They instruct the contractor to abandon the project, marking the beginning of the end for the Yaya Center Tower's west wing. But they don't leave quietly. In a dramatic turn of events, they decide to render the west wing useless and dysfunctional. Their final act of defiance leaves a mark that would be felt for years to come. In a move that stunned many, the Israeli contractor was ordered to abandon the project, but not before they sabotaged the building. This was no ordinary abandonment. The Israeli partners, feeling the heat from the dreaded special branch, decided to cut their losses. But they weren't going to make it easy for Nicholas Biwat, the total man. Aharoni, an Israeli resident and one of Biwat's business associates, made sure of that. Aharoni ordered the contractor to pour concrete into the very veins of the West Wing. The elevator shafts, the lifelines that would have transported people up and down the tower, were filled with solid concrete. The drainage system, the functional waterways that would have kept the building alive and operational, were also obstructed with concrete. The stairwells, the arteries that would have seen people bustling up and down, were blocked. The communication conduits, the nerves that would have connected the building to the world, were choked with concrete. It was an act of sabotage that went beyond simple abandonment. The structure was not just left unfinished, it was rendered useless. The west wing of the Yaya complex was now a hollow shell of what it could have been. Its potential was buried under tons of concrete, its promise of commerce and activity stifled under the weight of abandonment. It was no longer a symbol of progress, but a monument to a partnership gone sour. The destructive act left many structural engineers scratching their heads. How could they remedy such a mess? The majority proposed the only way was to demolish it all down to the foundation and start the project afresh. With that, 
the west wing of the Yaya complex was rendered useless, leaving a permanent scar on the Nairobi skyline. The abandoned Yaya Center Tower's west wing has baffled many since its abandonment. What has become of this once promising venture? The aftermath of the abandonment was as puzzling as the events leading up to it. The once bustling construction site was now a ghostly silhouette against the city skyline. Left in a state of disarray, the West Wing became a perplexing puzzle for structural engineers. The concrete that was poured into every elevator shaft, drainage, functional waterway, stairwell and communication conduit had hardened into an immovable mass. This created an intricate labyrinth within the building, making the task of rectifying the situation insurmountable. The Israelis had certainly made their departure felt, leaving behind a structure that was as dysfunctional as it was useless. But how does one go about fixing such a complicated mess? Structural engineers scratch their heads, pondering the magnitude of the task at hand. The building, once a symbol of prosperity and development, was now a problematic enigma. The solution that most engineers proposed was as drastic as it was necessary. The only way to salvage the situation they suggested was to raise the building to the ground. A complete demolition down to the foundation seemed like the only feasible solution. The idea of starting from scratch was daunting, but it was the only way to erase the physical manifestation of a failed venture. However, this proposal was met with a myriad of challenges. The process of demolition and reconstruction would require significant resources, time and effort. It would also mean acknowledging the failure of a project that was once a beacon of hope and progress. The decision to demolish the West Wing was not taken lightly, but it was a necessary step towards rectification. The West Wing of the Yaya Center Tower stands as a stark reminder of a complex web of relationships and activities that led to its downfall. The abandoned building, once brimming with potential, now serves as a symbol of a venture that got entangled in a web of covert operations, espionage and financial controversies, a monument to a time when the promise of prosperity was overshadowed by the realities of political intrigue and covert operations. Following the abandonment of the Yaya Center Tower's West Wing, the Israeli partners left the country, never to return. This departure marked the end of a tumultuous chapter in the life of Nicholas Biwat. Left behind was a colossal monument to misadventure and a business venture that had gone awry. The Israeli partner's departure was not a quiet exit. It was a powerful statement, a symbol of their defiance, and a final blow to their contentious partner, Biwat. The implications of their actions were far-reaching. Biwat's business empire took a hit, and his influence was dealt a significant blow. The west wing of the Yaya Center Towers, once a symbol of prosperity and power, was now a stark reminder of a failed venture. The Israelis may have left, but their actions left an indelible mark on the landscape of Nairobi and on Baywatch's legacy. The abandoned Yaya Center Towers West Wing is a silent witness to a tale of intrigue, power and defiance, a symbol of a time when power and influence could shape the skyline of a city. The tale of the Yaya Center Towers West Wing is more than just a story about an abandoned building. It's a testament to a time of political intrigue and power struggles. This isn't just a tale of concrete and steel, but one of ambition, audacity, and the labyrinthine world of international politics and business. Nicholas Biwat, a man of many facets, found himself in the heart of these machinations. Known for his savvy and unpredictability, he navigated the murky waters of political alliances and rivalries, both locally and globally. His association with the likes of Vaisman Aharoni and Gadzevi his involvement in covert operations and his complex network of relationships all contributed to a multifaceted and at times controversial legacy. The Yaya Center Towers West Wing, a monument to this legacy, stands as a stark reminder of the intricate dance between power and business. Its abandoned state is a testament to the tense relationships and complex negotiations that characterized this period it's a symbol of the audacious dreams that were perhaps too grand to materialize fully and the intricate web of global politics that can impact even the most local of ventures. This event, this abandonment, left an indelible mark on Biwat's legacy. It's a chapter in his story that speaks volumes about his ability to navigate the treacherous currents of international relations, his courage in the face of adversity, and his determination to pursue his ambitions, no matter the cost. 
The impact of this event reverberates beyond Biwot's legacy, reflecting the political and business landscape of the time. It was a time of uncertainty and change, of power struggles and shifting alliances, a time when the line between politics and business was blurred. Today, the abandoned Yaya Center Tower's West Wing stands as a silent monument to a chapter of Nairobi's history that many may prefer to forget, but which remains indelibly etched in the city's skyline.